Hi everybody, welcome to New York. Um, I'm here with Mark Cho, founder of the Armory. Co-founder. Co-founder. I got I to gotta remember my buddy Alan, so co-founder. Co-founder. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Well, it's a pleasure. It's the first time I come to your store here. Can you tell me a little bit, or tell us a little bit yeah, about absolutely. the Armory? Absolutely. And the story behind um, everything? So the Armory started in 2010, and uh, we're a menswear retailer, or we started as a menswear retailer, where we were collecting really interesting menswear from around the world, putting it all together as our own kind of retail collection, and then letting people come to the shop and see it. And then as time went on, we started to add in a lot of other things that were really meaningful to us. Um, so, you know, we love craft, we love craftsmen. So we started to add a lot of bespoke tailors into the mix as well. Yeah. And then eventually, we also actually started doing a lot of our own design. So at this point now, the Armory is like a mix of interesting bespoke craftsmen that come visit the store, and like collaborations and stuff that we have designed in-house. And that's kind of what the business looks like today. Very cool. I've, I've been around quickly and I've seen a lot of amazing things. Obviously we're here because we had this amazing collaboration, yeah. the Total Eclipse. Um, as a person who you know, design, have watches produced, mm. I always wonder how you, you, know, you combine the watch being an accessory as part of the entire mm. um, representation of, of a man today. Mm -hmm. I think today we could look at you know everything you're offering and, and also link it to watches. If yeah, we yeah, no, that would be great. Because this is your first time at this store, isn't it? Yeah. And we've been Which working on this project store, right for two years. I know. So somehow we've managed to do this project for two years, but we've never actually been to each other's respective businesses until like a week ago. Like I was yeah. in Schaffhausen last week, and now you're here at the Armory this right. week. Um, okay, so we can have a quick look around. Uh, this is the Tribeca store. This was the first store we opened in New York back in 2013, at the end of 2013. So you have two stores in New York. Mm -hmm. And three and stores three in, Hong Kong. in Hong Kong. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, this is my baby. Um, I love the store. You know, I designed the store with a couple of friends. And this is a good representation of like what our fall winter collection looks like. Um, so just like casually from here to here, like we have a, this is, kind of the breadth of what we do, right? So we have Rocky Mountain Featherbed, which is a Japanese casual wear maker, and uh, they do a lot of like American, like vintage American inspired designs. They How work do you find like someone like this? I mean, it's not like the brand you will find pretty much anywhere. It's mm. like you need to go find the right person, build a relationship before you'll be able to uh, feature it here, right? Well, Rocky Mountain Featherbed, for instance, like they're, they are, like in, in the world of Americana, right? If you like Americana, American style clothing, then like Rocky Mountain Featherbed is a very significant brand. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, because we do a lot of stuff with Japanese suppliers already, we kind of eventually tracked that all the way back down to the original supplier who's making it, and we get along well with them, and they do some special stuff for us, uh, and that is kind of what you see here. And how much do you influence in the, in the design? I mean, is it something that, I mean, they present to you and say, okay, I, I want to be able to sell this, or you go there and you talk to them and say, you know, that's, I, would, I would love to see something like this, combine those materials? Um, it, depends from, it depends from brand to brand and product to product. So for something like Rocky Mountain Featherbed, um, we would do simpler things, like we'd have specific ideas about fabric or color, um, and sometimes we would localize it as well. So for yeah. instance, like American clientele tends to have uh, longer torsos or longer arms than Asian clientele, and so we would make some adjustments to the pattern. Um, but we wouldn't necessarily come up with like a completely like from scratch 100% new product. Um, but you know, I mentioned that like there's some stuff that we do design from scratch for ourselves. Um, and so that would be this sort of stuff, right? So this is for instance our safari jacket. This is like a classic thing that we've had for a long time. And we came up with like the pattern for this in conjunction with one of our really good friends. Uh, and then also we source all the fabric and we do all the details. So you, it's the craftsman be behind this is somebody you met through another brand and then you went to the, to the source and said, let's do something together. Exactly. Under the Amory brand. Exactly. And you know, for more complex products like this where we're doing more of the design work, um, a lot of times we'll be either sourcing the fabric or even designing the fabric as well. Um, so we try to dig as deep as we can. Um, so there, there's a safari jacket, there's this, this is the three pocket blues on, which is kind of a cropped jacket. A little more casual. We did it in wool this year. Um, what would you wear that with? Something like it's this. Very casual. Or? Yeah. Well, it's like I like this sort of crop jacket because I think this is like one potential avenue for where work wardrobes could potentially go. Right. You have guys who are no longer wearing suits to work, but they want to have something that's that's casual but still looks detail. Like it still looks like it has some thought put into it. Yeah. Right. And the crop jacket used to be obviously a very casual thing, but I think now like it, people are more willing to accept it. You know, and it's actually, it can be, if you wear it correctly, a very flattering type of clothing to wear. You can wear them with a very high trouser, and then it just makes your legs look a lot longer, and it makes your whole entire body look a little bit leaner, right? Okay. 
And then so usually we'll have a crop jacket that's a little bit full, so you have a little bit more kind of, you look a little top heavy, and then like you taper down towards the feet. And as an overall silhouette, it's a, it's a good look for a man, I think, mm. you know. Like a lot of our, um, a lot of the ways we think about silhouette come from very, very classic traditional tailoring, te like tailoring ideas. Um, oh, actually this one's worth showing you. This is the City Hunter. And this is slowly becoming kind of like people in the watch industry's favorite. Um, I don't quite know how it happened, but I'm very pleased that it is happening. F.P. Jorn really oh, likes Francois it. Francois Paul. Francois Paul has a bunch. Um, SJX, watch okay. by SJX. Yeah, SJX yeah. has one as well. Tim Mosso has one. Um, who else? I'll have to try it. You do, you, you have to try it. I, I won't let you out of the store for that one. Mm. Uh, let's see. Shall we go a little deeper in the store and have a look at a few other things? All right, and then uh, so we have neckties on the left. We're still big believers in neckwear. You People, know. because of the, the COVID, wear less of neckties? Sadly, yeah. yes. Sadly, yes, people wear less neckwear than they used to, which is a real shame to me. Because, you know, for me, like, neckwear is a great way to add a little bit of color. Yeah. And uh, I think that a suit always just, you know, goes to the next level once you have a little bit of color. I haven't been wearing it that many recently, but it's true. I, I saw you wearing one yeah. just now and I was this like, is, yeah, This is this like is, a hint, like, hint, because you're yeah, in a white shirt with this, and a hint, hint. So this is, this is kind of the mainstay of our tailoring collection. Um, our tailoring, we experiment with like a lot of different aesthetics in our tailoring. Um, so like we do Southern Italian, um, we do Classic American, we do Neapolitan, uh, and we also work at a lot of different price points as well. Um, our entry level stuff is all made in Japan. Uh, it's actually made by a really great company called Ring Jacket, which is one of my favorite companies in the world. They do really great, very consistently made, high quality um, tailor clothing. So like this is kind of our classic Southern Italian aesthetic. Um, so this is soft in the shoulder, soft in the chest. Because um, it's a sport coat, we do patch pockets yeah. and we do a swelled edge on the lapel. Um, because you know, this is also kind of the world we're in right now, right? Like people, People still want to wear tailoring, but they don't want to wear it in quite as formal a way. So we're always trying to think about like, well, what can we do to like can bring just the... make tailoring a little bit more relevant to like today's world. That's uh, so that's the model three. What kind of, of price range are we, are we looking at? For those so the models? model three, like this, is fifteen fifty. Okay. And usually our jackets are between a thousand to maybe sixteen hundred for wool. Yeah. And then when you get to cashmere, then uh, we don't do that much cashmere as ready to wear. But when you get to cashmere, it's like two thousand, two thousand plus. And it, and uh, so somebody like me comes in try it on, then wait a couple of days and it's ready. You do it, everything yeah, in-house. That's right. Um, we, so all our jackets tend to come unfinished. Like yeah. we always want to alter it for every customer, yeah. um, which you know obviously it means you can't walk out with something the day you visit us, yeah. but I, I think the result is better. I think it's worth doing it that way. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Can ooh, you do it yourself? I, I could, but it would look really bad. <laughs> so I, I think people would, would not want to pay extra for me to, to do it myself. This is cool. This is the Model 12. So this is a new model we did. And actually, you feel that. Like so that's the Armory. Yes, this is the Armory. This is all under the Armory brand. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's a heavyweight um, jersey knit, but really, really heavy. And it's where, actually where got a ton of stretch in it. And, and that's, that's a fabric you designed? This is a fabric that we sourced. You sourced. So we okay, so it exists and then you... Because mm, like, what's interesting is we are very particular about where we get our fabrics from. Yeah. Um, and there are certain people that just do certain fabrics better. So we go straight to them. Oh, this is the cashmere one I was talking about. This is beautiful. This is, this is amazing. Yeah. This is wow. very, very fine. And you know, this is what I mean by you have to search for this stuff a little bit. So this is a Prince of Wales check. The, the scale is pretty normal. But what's unusual about it is A, it's made in very fine cashmere. And B, it's a mid-gray on pale gray, which is not something you see often. Because normally when you see a Prince of Wales, um, the contrast is much stronger. It'll it's be more beautiful. like a cream on a navy or a cream on a black. It's so soft. I mean, yeah. it's pure cashmere. Yes, this one's 100% cashmere. What so watch, this is like what, what watch do I wear with this? Uh, you can wear a total eclipse, <laughs> or you can wear a streamliner. I mean, you can wear. I think so you, can, you, can, you can. You don't have to wear. Have like a, it, it, it can be a yellow gold, rose gold, for sure, for sure. Vintage, or it can be sporty. Doesn't matter. For so sure, you, you can be very versatile. I think with this though, like I don't. I think can wear the, jeans with that. You could wear jeans with this for sure. But I think the ultimate way to wear this would always be like, because mm, it's such an elegant cloth. I yeah. think it would really be with you know a pair of charcoal flannels white shirt and then a black tie. Mm. I think that's like a simple, really effective way to wear it. And then with something like that, like white gold case, steel case, and if you and want, you can have a color. On, on, I mean, you, you can wear something like this? For sure, this? Yeah. for sure. I think a streamliner with this would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or, I mean, yeah. We'll try that too. Total clips like that, yeah. that's lovely. Well, we, have, we do a lot of DBs. We're still big <coughs> believers in double-breasted. And we think, and actually it's coming back a lot with I our clientele. I'm gonna leave with one of those today. Yeah, 
I think for you, especially like a Navy DB suit, yeah. it's because you mentioned you don't have one. Yeah. That's like one of the ultimate things I think every man should have in their wardrobe. It's just such <laughs> a. No, it's a really like it's, there's something very classy. Yeah, like yeah there's something very and reminiscent about it. a little bit of yeah. you know those amazing movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I exactly like it. right. How do mm. you decide like what's the next season thing? I mean, how do you do you go to fashion shows or you just talk to your suppliers and you say, well, I don't care what the others are doing. I just want to do what I like. It's really just uh, we just do what we like, and you know, part of this is because like we're not we're not big scale, right? right. So we don't necessarily need to ride any waves. Like we're close with our clientele, and we always have a sense of like what our clientele might want. We don't always necessarily have a sense of like what the broader market might want, but we know what our clientele might want. Because mm. what our clientele might want actually is very closely related to what we personally might want too. You know, so like one day if I'm just like feeling like oh you know I really want to go back to like more structured stuff. Like oftentimes my clientele is actually also thinking something very similar, you know, because we're all slightly looking for a new thing in our lives at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And when you say we, I, I mean, you mentioned at the beginning that you are co-founder. Co mm. Are the other founders part of this decision making, or are you leading that? Uh, yeah, we're a little funny. Team? We're a little funny in that um, you know the army has never really been about one specific look. Um, so me, Alan, and then uh, my buyer in Hong Kong, Jan and my creative director in New York, Jim, we all sit down and we put the collection together uh, and we all kind of weight each other's opinions fairly equally, although mm -hmm. everyone's will be like, no, you know, just veto something. Um, but I, don't, I never do that. Um, <laughs> and, and we really make an effort to mix everybody's taste and allow everyone's taste to come to the fore um, because there are certain things that like, I just wouldn't wear myself. Like actually, personally, I never wear our Neapolitan tailoring. I like it, I like it on other people, but personally, I'm not that into it. You know. And I always want um, our customers to also feel that sort of freedom. You know, like we are, we approach these things not from the perspective of oh we want everyone who comes out of the store to look the same. We approach it from the perspective of like we're here to help you build a wardrobe, and this wardrobe is about you. It's not about us, mm. right? So we need to understand you, and we need to help you make like choices for yourself. You know. We are your conciliary, but we are not like the person who's prescribing you things. So I think somebody like me who has limited experience in that field and you know and knowledge mm. would be very welcome into into the store because oh, yeah. you would take us by the hand and say, "Listen, you should explore this. Try that. Yeah. Maybe you combine those things." That's yeah. that's the way. Yeah. You know, your team absolutely handling that. Absolutely. I mean, we really want people to have a conversation with us, right? Um, I know, like some people find the store a little bit intimidating because you come in and it's like Impressive, all this stuff. But it's true, a little bit intimidating. Oh, thank you. But you know, you come in and it's like, like it can be a little imposing. We try our best not to make it imposing, and we try to keep things as casual as possible. Um, but you know, tailoring does carry that stigma of like, oh, this is like a really serious thing. To us, it's not. You know, like let's have a conversation. Let's learn. Let's learn some stuff together. It'd be great. All right. Hmm. Should we go further? Yeah. And this is the shoe section of the armory. Um, nice. So we do. I need shoes. You do need, you need shoes. Yeah, I need what shoes do you need? I want boots, actually. Oh, okay, we well, yeah. need some boots. Yeah, I don't have any, so I thought. You don't have boots? No. But in Switzerland, it's like snowy and cold. Well, and I have I have snow boots. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, when I wear my suit or yeah. So well, I think I we should look some Chelsea for you because I think Chelsea's with the suit. I I like Chelsea with the suit. I know some people don't, but for me, I think they're super cool. Let's look at it. Yeah. So you have like um, custom tailored. Standard, you have everything? Yeah, so for shoes, we do a bunch of ready to wear from a bunch of different brands, depending on kind of the style that you're looking for. Um, Carmina, which is this great shoemaker out of Mallorca, that's one of our bread and butter brands. Um, These yep. are Carmina. Okay. These are Carmina. Uh, and then we also do Solovier. This is kind of a much more avant garde, very quirky, very casual <coughs> Interesting, shoe. Interesting, yeah. Different, yeah. Though. It's different, not for everybody, but I actually quite like them, and they're very comfortable. You can treat it almost like a sneaker, you know? And that's from where? This is from France. Nice. And then uh, we do Alden, of course, which is a classic American shoe. Mm -hmm. They're great for, especially for their loafers and their chuckers. Is that really what you're wearing today? No, I am wearing the Armory shoes, though. No. Oh. Yeah, I'm saving the best for last. <laughs> um, we also have Yohei Fukuda. So this is a bespoke shoemaker out of Tokyo. Um, and he does a little bit of ready to wear. And this work is just like top, top of the top. Like this is, for me, like the best ready to wear shoe you can get on the market. How, I mean, how long does it take to make one pair? Um, for a bespoke, it's about 120 hours of work. 120 hours? So yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. how many can he make per year? He makes about 60 pairs of bespoke a year. Really? Yeah. And the wait wow. list is about two years. But the work is great. I actually am just, I just received a notice from him that he finished a pair of loafers for me. But that's not ready to wear. These ones are ready to wear. Oh, these are ready to so wear. So the bespoke is actually even better than this. Incredible. Yeah. And In what, fact, what, what kind of, I mean, price-wise? Price-wise, uh, ready to wear starts about 2500 and bespoke is about 4500 
So, okay, that's a significant uh, investment, but that's the kind of uh, of shoes you can wear the rest yeah. of your life. Yeah. If your shoes, if your feet don't. If your feet don't change. So okay. Amazing shoes. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure. Very interesting. Let's try it on. Okay, let's try some stuff on. All right, so Edouard, we've picked out some things that I think would work for you, right? Uh, that I really like, yes. Yeah, let's try it on. So this is a Model 3 sport coat. I love this material. So that's a full cashmere, right? Yes, this is a full cashmere one. Um, the style is Southern Italian, it's soft in the chest, soft in the shoulders. Man, it's awesome. I love it, though. Wow. Yeah. Mm. You're an easy fit, too, which makes my life much easier. <laughs> Yeah, see, like on this, like it's just sitting around your shoulders and on your neck really well as well. Length is good. Oh, you would have to feel this. This is amazing. Yeah. So where, where is that material coming from? This material is actually made by a mill called Dorme. Okay. And Dorme, um, they actually okay. work with a bunch of different sub mills, uh, but this one should be one of their English mills. Okay. Yeah, this is beautiful. And you wear that with... I actually like it like how you got it right now. So with navy trousers and with yeah. brown shoes, I think that's great. Okay. Otherwise, what I have, so like charcoal trousers and black shoes, I think would be really nice as well. Which watch? With wa which watch? Well, with this, I think one of your Fumier dials for sure. Or the Streamliner. That, does it have to be on the... On mid? No, it could be a nice leather. No. I think leather, but you know, have I think the Streamliner is awesome for this. You know, it's very, something about the metal it's very versatile, the but I think I would wear a leather. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe one of those. Yeah, maybe a Total Eclipse. I would definitely do the Total Eclipse with, um, with the charcoal. That's my size, shoulders. Yeah. You said you like, you make so, it a little bit wider than Yeah, usually. our look is always to be a little bit broader in the shoulder. So our shoulder line is actually slightly off of where the physical shoulder is. Okay. Because um, it just gives you a little bit more room to play with the waist. Yeah. So the waist could be a little bit trimmer without it being uncomfortable, okay. right? Because really, like, the shape of the garment comes from the fact that, like, the top has a difference from the bottom. Rather so than here you would alter the, body. the waist? For you, slightly, slightly in on the waist. Um, but actually, even on the sleeves, you're all right. Maybe just, like, half a centimeter longer on the right longer? sleeve. Yeah. yeah. But you're quite an easy fit. Quite an easy fit. Thank you. Nice. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, let's look at the next thing. Yes, what do we have? So you're taking this, right? <laughs> We're getting it on camera. You're taking this. <laughs> taking so many things. <laughs> I'm sure I have space in my suitcase for everything. Well, that's why we have a very efficient and economical shipping service. <laughs> nice. Okay, this one I'm really excited for you. Yes. Because you said too. you don't own a double-breasted suit either, right? Yeah, I don't. But I'm, I would love to have it. Oh, there you go. But that's something, you know, I, I remember, like, for me, for many years, it was this old-fashioned thing that my father would wear, and now I, I feel like it's something I want to wear as well. I think so. You know, I've, I think they're very elegant. It's a matter of like getting the proportions right. You know, with a double breast off, you don't want it to be too big. It should be relatively fitted. Do you need um, a tie with that? I think on the navy, if you just want to wear a plain white shirt, it's very stylish. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to really dress it up and take it to another level of elegance, then yes, with the tie, it's always very nice. And tone on tone, or do you, would you be a little with bit more? With uh, this, if I, if I had something really important to go to, I would do this with a silver tie. See, like that. Mm. Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Something with a little bit of texture. And, and so you would put the upper button, or? Ours, by design, are always to the middle button, but you can also use the bottom button if you prefer. It's a little bit of a different look. And what happens is it makes the lapel just roll down a little bit further. In fact, if we do that, what I would always suggest is you button the inside. The mm -hmm. inside, actually, I never button if I'm using the, the middle button, but I always button it when I'm buttoning the bottom. And then it opens a little bit more? It opens a little bit more, but it also keeps the waist small. Mm. Because otherwise, the thing opens a little too much. So here now, you really get that sense of a roll. And like that really long roll can be very nice. Like it's very elegant. I like that a lot, though. It's nice. Cool. You put a poc pocket? Pocket square, simple white would be great. Yeah. Well, I guess if you bought a total eclipse, you could use the total eclipse pocket square. <laughs> Makes sense. Beautiful. Right, I'm going to show you one more thing. So you remember we are talking about the City Hunter. So I've got one here for you. I'll have to try the, the pants, but not on camera. Not on camera. It's not that kind of video. It's not that kind of video. Thank you, Mark. So what do we have here? This is the City Hunter. So this is something that we came up with. It's based on an old style of... So that's Span the Armory. This is the Armory, yes. And the City Hunter is based on an old style of Spanish hunting jacket called the Teba, 
And then we just made a bunch of adjustments to the pattern. Uh, we did this, like this is actually a phone pocket. So a phone, it's, that's why it's long and narrow. So if it's a phone, it has a snap button. We also have a nested pocket here so you can carry a little bit more in your pockets. And we do these custom. So if you wanted to have one, you know, in a different fabric, um, in a linen, in a cotton, in a cashmere, all possible. This is very nice. Yeah, I love this thing. You know, it's like between a cross between like a blazer and a piece of knitwear. You know, I feel like I, I could wear it in the office and then, I, you know, by the chimney in the evening. Yeah. Having a glass of whiskey. Yeah. It's really nice with knitwear. So if you had like a turtleneck or something like that, it looks great with that. Mm. Or um, we do really good polos. This is really nice with our polo shirts too. So this one is more of a winter focused one. Yeah. But we also make this design in linens. Okay. Mm. It's really nice in linens too. And then for the linen version, we don't line it. Whereas for the winter version, uh, for the summer version, we don't line it, but for the l winter version, we do line it. Nice. This is a good color for you, man. Yeah, I like those colors. Yeah. Because I feel like you can wear a lot of different yeah. trousers. This is actually from an English mill called Marling and Evans. Uh, Marling and Evans does, they actually have a great palette. Among the English mills, they're not so well known, but I actually find they have one of the best palettes of all the English mills. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. So thanks, for, get, uh, thanks for looking at some stuff in my with suitcase us. now. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're going to take all of it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Plus all the bajillion other things that I picked out for you. Alrighty. Um, you have to rush for a flight, don't you? Yeah. It's such a shame. I know. Listen, man, it was really good to spend some time together. I really my pleasure. It. I'll be back. Yeah. Or oh, in Hong Kong. Hopefully when they, the border opens again. And yeah. Although I really want to come back to Zurich because yeah. like Zurich, Schaffhausen, amazing, man. I had such a good time. And hopefully we'll have another project to work on very soon, right? Let's see. Bring some surprises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's been awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I hope you uh, you learned something. You discovered the Amory and Mark in your universe. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we'll have some surprises with Moser, with the Armory in the in the years to come. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Eduard. Safe travels. Take care. Bye, everybody.